Welcome to the Ted Lewis Trail, and thank you for your interest. If you have a printed trail, we'll give the places of interest numbers. Ted Lewis lived in Barton from the age of six until he was 21, although he rented a flat for a year in Hull's Ash Grove whilst he was a student at Hull College of Art and Design. He then returned to Barton-upon-Humber after the breakup of his marriage. Apart from a couple of years in Theddlethorpe, he lived in this town until he sadly died in 1982. We're going to start at number 5, 118 West Ackridge. This was the first home that the Lewis family lived in, after Ted's father, Harry Lewis, obtained a position of manager at the nearby Elsham Quarry. Young Ted made friends easily in what was known as the West End Estate, and as he grew older would explore the open countryside between the rear of his family home and the Humber Estuary. This is number 6 on the trail. This is what the area looked like before the Humber Bridge changed the vista forever. Ted painted this childhood memory in oils from his friend's house overlooking the Humber. Local children went to school at Barton County School, now Castle Dyke School number 3, while fathers either sought work or picked up workers who waited around Barton Railway Station. This is featured in Ted's autobiographical novel, The Rabbit. When Ted was 12, the family moved virtually round the corner to number 7 on our trail, 46 Westfield Road, which was a Lewis home for 8 years. Ted loved this house and made a camp called Kexby Hall in a coach house in the extensive garden. As we move down Westfield Road, we come to number 20, which is where the Lewises moved to, around 1963. This is number 8 on our trail. When Ted moved back in 1974, the small boy in the house opposite watched the goings-on in his bedroom with the latest female conquest with great interest. Young Ted went to school at what was then Barton Grammar School, number 21 on this trail but it has now been demolished because it had outgrown its buildings. Fourth and fifth formers, including Ted, studied at Baysgarth House, number 20 on our trail. It was there that Ted was mentored by Head of English, Henry Treese, who put three of Ted's early short stories in the school magazine. Behind the house is a Ted Lewis memorial garden, in sight of the redwood tree where Ted enjoyed a crafty smoke. Ted and his pals enjoyed a drink of beer from an early age. The volunteer arms welcomed the boys from the grammar school, the White Lion, number 19 on the trail, which features in Ted's 1965 novel The Rabbit, is now a shop, but the George is still very much a popular venue. Ted and his pals would get together in the band room at the top of the hotel. These are now bedrooms, and it was Lila's bar that Ted often repaired to after returning to his hometown. The Corn Exchange Club, number 17 on the trail, in the marketplace, was formerly the Conservative Club, where Ted's father Harry and other Barton worthies met and played snooker. Again, it features in The Rabbit. Ted Lewis always liked to drink and would play the piano in The Red Lion, number 12, where Lila of Lila's Bar in the George was a barmaid at the age of 16. He also loved to play snooker in The Liberal Club, number 15, because it was the best flatbed in town. It is now to be converted into a social enterprise. While we're at the corner of Newport, let's take a look at New Hall, number 14. Ted Lewis's childhood and all-life friend was John Dickinson, who lived on the West End estate as a boy, but became a well-respected doctor in Barton and lived in New Hall. Ted would often repair to John and Nadine Dickinson's to enjoy their hospitality and play their piano. The second to last pub of Ted's acquaintance is the Steam Packet, number 9, now called Charlie's. This features in The Rabbit as the place of young Victor Graves' sexploits with young girls from out of town, one of whom consummated their evening by having sex with Ted's friend in a nearby coal yard. Equally insalubrious were Ted's adult exploits at the White Swan, number one, opposite the railway station. Still a busy hostelry, it hosted Ted's affair with a landlady later in his life in Barton. Her husband was a professional rugby player in Hull, someone who it was a bad idea to cuckold, who promptly filled Ted in. One of the principal entertainments in the 1950s was a cinema. Barton had two, and Ted, John and his pals would visit the Oxford, number 13 on the trail, regularly. This was the posh one. The star, number 10, showed mainly B-movies, which Ted loved and acted out with his pals. Ted's novels are often thought of as having a cinematographic aspect. The Lewises purchased a shop opposite the star, but the cinema stopped trading just before they completed. Ted's mother Bertha served in the sweet shop, number 11, and was a well-known figure. Ted celebrated his 21st birthday in 1965 there. And our last visit is to number 23, 33 Ferriby Road, opposite the Ted Lewis Centre. 
In this small terraced house lived Bertha Lewis after her husband Harry died in 1975, the year after Ted returned to Barton. Ted had no home of his own, and when he was not living with his latest woman friend, he stayed with his ever-forgiving mother. He wrote his novels and TV scripts there and borrowed money from her when he was broke. She loved him constantly, and he was living there when he was taken into Scunthorpe Hospital for the last time. Thank you for taking part in the Ted Lewis Trail. There is much more to see in the Ted Lewis Centre, which is on the opposite side of the road, close to Ted Lewis's mother's home. A warm welcome will always await you.